Yeah, I wanted to kind of document the troubles I had. Um, I, I know there's lots of videos out there when it comes to um, using these Dallas 18B20 um, temperature sensors, which are really marvelous things that I really like and that you can run a, a whole network on just through your wires, uh, signal wire, voltage, and ground. Uh, and I know there's lots of videos of how people have set these things up and showing demonstration, and that's fine. But what I think we really need is demonstrations of documentation of how to use these things in a real world situation. Um, I don't have mine just three feet away from my Arduino. Uh, and that's a great when you're just learning how to do it, but then applying that to a situation and running into all sorts of trouble here too. So that's why I'm doing this video here too. I've overcome uh, on my network. Um, and what I'm doing here actually, this has to do with my um, um, solar collector I built last summer here too. and. This is this is a Fresno tracking. I got other videos you can look at that here too. But what I'm using for the temperature sensors of this thing is actually these uh, Dallas uh, 18B20 uh, temperature sensors, and I have five of these things um, based on a network that's almost 100 feet from end to end here too. Um, there's what you see in the picture here. I have some on the in input here. Um, and I have some on the output here, uh, measuring it here too. The, again, this picture was taken before insulation was all added here too. And it, this system works great during the summer, but these cold, snowy, cloudy days in winter, hmm, not 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 very well. But that's just nature of the beast then too. Uh, I also have temperature sensor on the PV panels here, which I can turn the fans off and on to cool them down in the summertime. And what's not pictured here, I have two more of the temperature sensors back on my hot water tank. There, that's the thermal loop I have in that uh, preheating tank that this uh, system heats up here too. Um, so anyway, this is a, this was what my network looks like. Okay, These are the Dallas 18B20s and there's five of them in this picture here too. And, um, about 60 feet from the my Mega, Arduino Mega to my two sensors in the tank. And I have about 15 feet running to my sensor up on the PV uh, panels. And then on, on the other one, going to my collector, is about 20 feet out. And then another 15 feet past that one uh, is, is the whole network here, too. And I have to say, when I was building this thing, uh, it worked really well. I put this first thing together here. and I got the first sensors in the tank working. Uh, these first two in the tank working. Fantastic. I had the 15-footer to it. Not a problem. However, then when I added the rest of it here too, then the minute I put this line on, these two stop reporting. And I start switching things around. I figured, well, it must be the sensor. I don't know why. And so I'd plug in different sensors. I had a variety of these things. Some are the waterproof ones, some are the plug-ins, some are just the integrated circuits then too. And I finally got the right combination for these to work. Um, temporarily, I should say. Um, about three or four months later, this one went out here too. I realized a rodent had chewed through the wire, and I replaced that one. And about a month after that one, it went down again, this time because it pulled out of the holder and got wet. And just we had about a week of rain, and this waterproof sensor um, was not very waterproof. And unfortunately, when it went out, it took one of these other sensors out with it. And try as I could, I could not get it to up, get the system up and running. Okay, um, so I went back and realized I had to take a look at why. What 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 was I doing wrong here actually? So um, I went back to this guidelines. I wish I'd, I wish I'd seen this. Although I don't think it would have made a big difference in how I built this thing because this is what I needed. And uh, but this is what this the guidelines here. In fact, there's a link to it here. This is the some of the d uh, documents you can get then too. And the closest thing, and there's lots of examples there, what to do. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is what to not to do. And this is kind of closely what I've built here too. What they call this a star configuration here too. And this is the little um, note on it saying it's really not recommended. Uh, matching impedance problems and reflections back and forth and um, so I'm guessing yeah maybe that's some of the problem I have here too um, so this is the star I have and I figure well I have to do something because I need this thing here too and before you become too far down this rabbit hole I, I am not using parasitic power okay in fact if you got if you look down here there's a power sense this is taken right out of the data sheet from the Dallas uh, 18b20 
right here in the data sheet there's this power sense supply here too if you have voltage coming to it it's just going to switch it to um, regular powering for you to use this in parasitic power you have to have this thing tied the b sub d tied to ground so that will not so it'll turn off the parasitic power and i just have it running with an extra wire to it um, to external uh, my uh, v sub c actually my power by volt power and a note on wires uh, I, I know from my work on solar and using DC versus uh, solid core versus multi-stranded versus large diameter wires that, you know, for, for transferring power, you have to have large diameter wire and you have to have usually a uh, multi-stranded wire uh, because the skin effect, some other things here too. And so what I usually do as my recommendation is actually use a, a multi-stranded large diameter wire. It doesn't have to be welding cable. I mean, it's just a little bit larger than normal, but... I, I think if I were to run a Cat5 solid core uh, wire here, I probably would have had even more problems than what I had there, too. So, anyway, that's my recommendation for the wire. I always try to use a little bit larger here, too. And I was fortunate I had leftover uh, from another project with stuff I ran my longest run on that was actually shielded pairs, multi-stranded wire. And each pair was shielded, and then the whole thing was shielded, which I ground all the wires. Um, the extra wires I was not using then, too, here. Now... What what I did, as many of you do, and this is actually, I, I, I did overcome this problem, and, and I'm not exactly sure how, uh, but I did, okay, is that many of you have this, when you first get in these Dallas things, the easiest way to do it is just do the get temperature by in, index, okay? You send out this command, it reports back to you, and this is just not this is not the code. This is just snippets of the code I'm using here too. But you know you have to have, include everything, and I have my float, floating decimal variables up here basically, and uh, I can just then plug in down here what each one of these by index is going to be here too. Now I included this link here too. Uh, this link is great. It'll show you how to use the uh, this system and also what's called by address now what i did i could not get this system running okay this is by index and no matter what i tried no matter what configuration i tried after my last uh, couple uh, temperature sensors went out i couldn't plug them in i couldn't find them and they just would not work however and the the problem with the index <laughs> the big problem uh, i should say another problem with the index is that when you have these things just plugged in numbers here, it's great that they're short runs um, and, and nothing ever falls out, nothing have a problem. It's, it's, it's fantastic. However, if say you would suddenly lose this sensor, the one that reports the number two, well, it wouldn't automatically just say sensor two is not working. What it does, it then advances these other numbers up and suddenly what used to be two is now reporting what used to be three. Uh, so and that kind of messes up your display and also messes up my controls here too. And I also I found that very hard to um, figure out what sensor went down because they were all in different places it seemed like all the time. So I really wanted to go to the by address, and this is what the this is what the code is for address. Each of these, of course, um, Dallas 1820Bs have a unique. Um, address, you know, burned into them, you know, hardwired into them here too. Um, and so, and to find these things, like I said, go to this site right here. You can download the code that will help you find it, and then you can plug it right into your program. And the minute I switched over to sensors by, not index, but by address, okay, um, that immediately took care of all my problems, all everything reported and if, if a sensor fell out i mean what which it hasn't yet but if a sensor falls out it's not going to advance one to it just going to say minus 197 or whatever it does for an error code there too so that's my first recommendation here too don't use by index but do by address the minute i went to that my system which is always kind of funky just became rock solid hard wonderful foundational thing and I've never had a problem with it since you know which is great then too um, and here's my little hint uh, when you get this this is from the sniffer program okay let me run this little video here too so 
um, it's going to report these numbers here. And of course, if you highlight them, you're not you're going to you won't be able to right click on them. It does not work. However, these old DOS commands, Control C, you can copy it with Control C, then paste it right in your program. That way, it doesn't scribble these numbers down here too. Uh, there's other programs I think out there will help you just incorporate them into your code, but that's my hint of the day on that one right there. So now. I went down a little bit further down this rabbit hole. Yes, I got mine fixed, but I couldn't ever figure out why these weren't working. And I did a lot of looking, you know, lurking on forums and whatever. And a lot of people are having this other problems here too. Um, in fact, this is a common theme that my sensors, once I got far away from the Arduino, it stopped working. And I ran into this article here too about the fake and counterfeit um, these temperature sensors. It hadn't even occurred to me. Of course, anything as popular as this is going to be faked and counterfeited kind of off. In fact, this what this little story was here. This guy had bought, I think, like a thousand of these things and tested them all and found out 80% of them <laughs> were fake. And sure enough, if you go to this um, the source here too, there is an Arduino code that you can just get plug into your Arduino, hook up your temperature sensor, and it will, look, it will compare the checksum and a few other numbers then too, and it will tell you if it's fake or not. Okay, and so I started plugging in all mine, every single one of my waterproof temperature sensors turned out to be, well, they were reported as fake. The only ones that actually were um, authentic were just the little, the chips I got by themselves, not built on a the board then too. So, you know, who knows what's going on in some of these, you know, these uh, knockoffs here, too. So um, when you run these programs, what it'll do, it will give you um, the serial output. And so what I did, I just copied the serial output here, too. This is the one that will give you all the information here, too, about, you know, hey, this is all passed. And down on the bottom here, it'll say, responded like a genuine max maxim. Fantastic. Wonderful. Unfortunately, this is what I kept getting. I went back and tried several things I had. And I, I bought mine from Amazon places and other places. And I have different people I bought them from. I even got different sensors. Every single one of them was, was a, basically a fake or reported to be a fake. They still work. Nah, but it, it may have something to do with how you know funky my uh, network is here too so but anyway that's that's it i hope this helps um i would definitely say go out and get this particular program and start looking at ones you had there too it might make a uh, might make a difference but for me my system's up and running even with these fakes however i had to do it by address and not index um so anyway hope this helps